Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Goddess Guidance. It is me, your goddess, Hestia Aphrodite, the voice from the divine realm. If you are new to this channel, please be sure to like and subscribe to affirm that you are a part of this divine, divine, divine community. So without further ado, we are continuing on with our Spirit of Jealousy and Envy series because, woo, if you are a chosen one, a light being, an earth angel, we deal with the spirit of jealousy and envy every single day. Ugh, it is exhausting, isn't it? My goodness. <laughs> so understand that they don't hate you. Oh, they love you. They love you, but they can't stand that they love you. Honey, they don't hate you. They wish they were you. Ooh, let's repeat that one more time. They don't hate you. They wish they were you. And that goes for all the races, the genders. So don't think that just because you are a man that women don't have the capacity to be envious and jealous of you. And definitely don't think that if you are a woman, that men do not have the capacity to be jealous and envious of you. And sometimes they are the worst ones. Women, we get a bad rap for being nasty and mean and cruel to each other. But when that veil lifts, when your third eye opens up, listen, the things that you will see and you will know about people, my goodness, the truth that comes out. So understand that they don't hate you. They wish they were you, especially, especially if they are suffering from a psycho-spiritual ailment. And let's break down psycho-spiritual ailment. Oftentimes, people truly don't understand the concept of we are spirits having a human experience, meaning we are spirits, life force, prana, energy, who have access to a body. And in having access to a body, we also have access to tools. And one of those tools is our mind, our mind. So when you are in alignment from a psycho-spiritual perspective, you understand that you are a spirit having a human experience that you are not your body. You have a body. Your body is a temple. It is sacred and you want to take care of it because it is housing your spirit, but the body itself is just flesh. You understand that there is something beyond the body. There is a spirit. There is a soul. There is a spirit and there is a soul. And in that spirit and in that soul, you are doing everything that you can to keep that spirit grounded and taken care of. But when someone is suffering from a psycho-spiritual ailment, that means that they are no longer identifying with their spirit. And that could be for many, many different reasons. Many different reasons. A lot of those reasonings are trauma, abuse, neglect, and abandonment in childhood specifically. But they have in some way abandoned their spirit they have disassociated from their spirit. They are now a disembodied spirit, meaning either the soul has literally left the body, right? And think about it this way. Oftentimes survivors of sexual abuse talk about how their spirit left their body. And it was a coping mechanism, a coping mechanism for them to get through the abuse that they had to experience, it was the only way for them to survive. So their spirit left them. And sometimes when the spirit leaves you, that doesn't automatically guarantee that it will return. Especially, oof, especially if the abuse is repeated time and time and time again. Oftentimes the 
spirit, the negative spirit that is living within the abuser goes into the victim, especially depending upon the kind of sexual abuse that occurred, right? In some ways, it is energy transference and that energy transference lingers, which is why when we talk about this concept of celibacy and abstinence, it does have so much validity to it because you are ensuring that there are no other energies impeding with yours or impeding on your energy. You are a clear vessel and the only energy that is that is embodying your body is your own. But when we intertwine ourselves with another individual, we are also entwining ourselves with any spirits or energies that may be living within them. And in that they can transfer. So went a little bit off topic there, but it's valid. It's valid so people can understand how these things happen, right? So when we are suffering from a psycho spiritual ailment, understand that individuals are no longer attached to their soul, their pure soul, their pure spirit, their divine spirit. They are now having to attach to a false sense of self, a mask known as the, their ego which is a figment of their imagination. It is not who they are. It's who they imagine themselves to be. Because an ego is a creation of the mind. It is not who you actually are because who you actually are is your spirit. Who you actually are is your life force, your prana, your soul. So if someone is suffering from a psycho spiritual ailment, it means that they are detached from their soul and that they are now identifying with a false sense of self, which is a mask. And for those of us who are light beings, who are chosen ones, who are divine energies, oftentimes you are interacting with individuals who are suffering from their false sense of ego, also known as egomaniacs. And in connecting with these kinds of individuals, oftentimes they are using us as a mirror. Follow me, follow me. I'm going to take you somewhere, okay? Buckle up. So they are using you as a mirror somewhere, somehow, because they don't have a spirit or soul themselves. They are deeply attracted to those who have one. And that goes back to that empath narcissistic relationship dynamic or that entanglement because they're not relationships at all whatsoever. The individual who is lacking a soul and identifying with their mind, also known as an ego, is looking at you, you divine light being, for some kind of acknowledgement, but mostly for personality. Mostly for energy. They want to absorb your energy, but not only are they absorbing your energy, they also desire to absorb your personality. They also desire to absorb your soul because they don't have one. They don't have one. And they are looking for supply. They are looking for energy and they are looking for personality for them to then go out into the world and feel what? Validated based off of the false sense of self, their ego, their mask, the figment of their imagination that they have created because they do not have a soul or that where that soul is somewhere in the ether searching for its home. So it brings me back to the whole point of this episode. They don't hate you. They wish they were you. Those individuals who are mimicking you, who are envious of you, who are jealous of you, who are harboring resentment towards you, they're doing so because you have the very thing that they wish they had, a personality, also known as a soul, a fully matured personality who has moved beyond childhood, who is functioning and healthy and high vibrating they don't have access to that. It is not possible for them. Well, it actually is possible for them, but they are choosing. They are choosing 
to not do the work for them to reconnect with their soul or they're choosing to not do the work so that they release the figment of their imagination known as their ego moving beyond that ego to understand the depths of who they are and to somehow some way reconnect with their soul but to do that they have to move past pride they have to move into a space of courage and that is something that most people are not willing to do why you have to let go of the figment of imagination of self that they have created in their mind And the last thing that these individuals want to do is to let go of their precious ego because it's that ego that's keeping them safe in a very distorted and delusional kind of way. So understand that these people who are jealous and envious of you, they don't hate you. They secretly and eventually openly maybe desire to be you which is why they're dangerous, (laughs) which is why you must be careful of these kinds of individuals. Only connect with those who are also high vibrating. Toxic individuals, let them go. Because you are dealing with someone who doesn't have their authentic self, their authentic soul within their body. You're dealing with someone who has created an idea of who they are in their head and they're playing that out every single day. That's not healthy and that's also very dangerous because depending upon the day, they're going to wake up and desire to be this person or that person or depending upon who they are in front of because remember, people are mirrors to them because they need a personality. In front of one individual, they're one way or in front of another individual, they're a different way. Or if you could be a fly on the wall and watch this person, you will realize that the personality that they have decided to put on today is yours, which is why they don't hate you. They wish they were you. Until next time, everyone. Bye-bye.